Hey, this is Dr. Aeronautics, and welcome to my second tutorial with the Delta Glider 4. This tutorial is going to focus on a few state changes. Um, I have outlined a uh, system state diagram, which is important for uh, using a spacecraft as complex as this. Hopefully my audio quality sounds a little bit better. The uh, weather has been a little bit nicer to me. I haven't been able, or I haven't been needed to run climate control as much. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through these different modes. So you have a state, for example, safe mode. That's a state. And you have another state, cold and dark. That's a state. Uh, to go between states, you use checklists. Like, for example, to go from safe mode to take off readiness, you'd use checklist one, which is um, ground cockpit startup. Some ways you can only go one way. Other times it doesn't make sense. For example, you could technically go from landing ready back to reentry ready, but there wouldn't be any reason to do that. Um, there are also things that you can't do. For example, if you're in the orbiting readiness state and you go straight into cold and dark, you will... Um, let me just put it this way. The simulation is not going to end nicely because that turns off your oxygen. So there, there are some things that we, some movements that we don't do. For example, you'll notice cold and dark will only go to takeoff readiness. You can't, you can't go to orbiting readiness. Now, for example, safe mode. Safe mode is okay to use. Um, safe mode is okay to be used in, um, when you're docked. So that's just a uh, that's just an example. So in an effort to make these tutorials not be too long, we're only going to cover a few of the states and state changes uh, checklists. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up a scenario file called landed KSC departure to ISS. And even though it sounds uh, like we're going to the ISS, that's not required. So we're actually going to sit on the ground and play around with the uh, instruments and states, but uh, eventually we will go to the ISS. Okay, so we're going to start here. The simulation will put you in takeoff readiness. You can confirm that using the keys D61, which will run your before takeoff checklist. And it will come back with configuration correct. And that way you know that you're in the takeoff readiness state. Uh, generally, that's a good method of identifying where you are. Because when you load this simulation, you're going to be in one of these states. And you're going to want to know uh, which state you're in. So we're going to start off with the takeoff readiness. Then we're going to do checklist 10, which will power us off. And then we're going to go to cold and dark. So we'll be in cold and dark. And then we're going to use checklist one for a ground cockpit startup. And then we're going to go back to take off readiness. Then we're going to run checklist nine and go into safe mode. Safe mode is one of the most important states that you can put your delta glider in because you can let it sit either on the ground or connected to another spacecraft and you don't have any oxygen consumption, you don't have any power consumption. That's why they call it safe mode. Uh, depending on where this is, uh, it controls when you can put your spacecraft in safe mode. For example, you can't really go into safe mode when you're transiting between planets if you're not docked to anything. There's not really anything you can do about that because you, you need your oxygen. So then we'll be in safe mode, and then we'll run through the checklist number one a second time because there are a little bit of differences. Even though we're running checklist one, there's a few differences. Uh, and we'll just run through that, 
and we'll end up back and take off readiness. Okay, here we are now in the scenario. We should be ready for takeoff. That's D61. And uh, a quick tap of D61. Configuration correct. Confirms that we are indeed in the takeoff readiness state. So let's run checklist 10 to power off into the cold and dark. So that's 10. Power off cockpit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here's power off cockpit. Uh, the first step is uh, all engine cutoff. The way you look at that is you look at your fuel flow for uh, main, hover, and retro. And your fuel flow for RCS. And both of those are reading 0.0. .0. So all engines are cut off. Then we're gonna go to turn these valves off. So here's the hover valve. You just left click once to turn the valves off. So we get the hover valve, the automatic air intake, which will add a little bit of oxidizer into our fuel and make it slightly more efficient. Turn off the two main valves, one for each thrust chamber. We have two thrust chambers in the back. By the way, note this gas that's coming out of the vent, that won't be there by the time we're done with this. Okay. So, the, next we're gonna turn the RCS valve off and then confirm that the fuel dump and crossfeed switches are off. You remember I said that I was a little bit concerned about uh, the previous Delta glider, the stock Delta glider, not having a um, it did, did not have a crossfeed switch and it did not have a fuel dump switch so because it had a maximum landing weight but no ability to dump fuel that caused a significant issue so we have fuel dumps you just verify that the valve indicator is blank and that the crossfeed is selected to off so that is off and both input valves, which are right here, should be reading off as well. And then just check to make sure that the fuel hatch is closed. And another extra check would be to make sure that you have 0, 0.0 pressure on the valves. And a quick check of everything says that we are finished with the fuel and engine system. So next we're going to move on to the life support pan. So we just make sure that the input valve pressure is off. Now you will always receive... Uh, valve pressure when you're in the atmosphere because we have an onboard compressor that will actually take in nitrogen and oxygen and process it, which is kind of really handy. But for the time being, we're not using it and the valve is off, so we're good to go. Input selector is this guy right here. You can choose to fill tanks A or B. Right now it's off, which is what we want. And then next it wants the cabin recycling main and backup system off. So if you want to do this in the most realistic way possible, you turn it off from right to left and off from left to right. For example, if you do this, your filter is still going to be active uh, and that doesn't really matter, but your cooling is active and your moisture is active, which means there would, there would be lots of cold air pulling in the vents so it'd get down to like zero degrees and you'd also have moisture just condensing to the vents so that's not a good idea the best way to do it is to turn your backup system off and then your main system off so go one two three four one two three four in a real spacecraft if you did that you would get a uh, you would get a master alarm because basically at this point you can see the co2 levels rising and the o2 level will begin dropping because we're not in a in a um, we're, we're technically in a time bomb right now we're not in a safe cabin state so you'll note before we go fully cold and dark I'm actually going to open up the uh, even though it's not part of the checklist because there's people on board I am going to open up the nose cone and the airlock because there because there are people in here if we go fully cold and dark we're sealed which means, you know, we'll eventually run out of oxygen. 
Next page. O2 A and B system off. All you got to do is hit these four tanks right here. Uh, left clicking will turn the valve counterclockwise. Left or right clicking will turn it clockwise. So left click, right click, left click, right click. All off. Next, we're going to go to the middle panel and deal with a few uh, main engine gimbal controls, which allow the uh, it actually allows the thrust chamber to change its orientation. You'll see about uh, I think it was about 30 seconds before launch of the space shuttle. You'll see its thrust chambers kind of swing left and then swing right and then return to the middle. And that's just a gimbal test. Okay, so we're going to comp CNT and we're going to comp lock, which basically means the thrust chambers will not be allowed to gimbal. Okay, now we're gonna go to the upper panel. If on ground or docked, open nose cone and open both airlock door. Oh, that's very nice. See? This is very, very, very great. So the deal here is um, the people who wrote this checklist knew of the fear that I had. And I don't use this, this uh, mode a lot because I've been doing so many tutorials recently. I've, you know, not done that. So that's perfect. So you just click the nose cone to open. We're going to tell the outer door to open. And keep an eye here. You see uh, we're still going up and we're still going down. Going down pretty fast, actually. Watch that relax when I open the inner door. There we go. Getting more oxygen. The carbon dioxide is flowing out of the spacecraft. We're pulling in that Florida humidity. And we're losing all sorts of random contaminants. Which are not filtered out. So, in reality too, the temperature would be going way up. It's going down because it's set to ISA. There's no local weather. But maybe that's a mod in orbiter. Okay, so the nose cone and the airlock door are open. So next we're going to make sure that the gear hydraulic pressure is off, and it's not. So to turn the gear hydraulic pressure off, hit this guy, turn it to lock. Now, um, we are going to turn off the seatbelt, turn off the strobe. So remember, seatbelt makes people wear their spacesuits. So right now, everyone has their spacesuits on. Now they don't. I'm going to turn the strobe light off. And it's actually interesting, even though it says strobe, it's actually strobe plus a rotating beacon light. Okay, uh, next we're going to go to power off the individual subsystems. Now, I kind of like to do this bit by bit because I'm picky rather than just, you know, go for everything. So, we're ready to turn the HUD straight off. But in a real spacecraft, we get a fault if we didn't power off our MFDs cleanly. So I'm just going to power them off just like that. And now we can turn off the MFD. We shouldn't see much of a power drop. <laughs> well, I guess that's not realistic. Whatever. Right now we're not dependent on any radio or communications, so we can go ahead and power that down. We've made all of our airlock movements. The airlock is open, and we're in a safe cabin state. We can turn the airlock off. Now we're down to the engine. Let's come check our engine system right here. Everything is good. Probably want to turn the thruster doors to close just so that they can't actuate. That's something extra that I like to do. Make sure we're in comp lock, that's good. Powering down the engine, now we're only drawing two and a half amps. 
Uh, I'm going to go for the life pack next, which is over here. Just check to make sure everything's set off. I'm going to turn the Windows filter off. The Windows filter basically filters the bad UV light and X-rays and cosmic rays which can come in. It's not needed in a thick atmosphere. Life pack powering down. And you can see we've got everything on that. We've got hardly any power drop there. Okay. So at this point, it's not listed as part of the uh, part of the thing, but there's actually an ability to eject. If I pull this cord here, uh, all of these doors will blow out, the hatch will blow out, and everyone can bail out. Uh, we don't want that ability while the spacecraft is off. Uh, look at that, it got all dark and everything. So we're going to go ahead and save that. So now if we pull this cord, nothing will happen. Okay, we're going to go for the uh, computer next, just to make sure. I want to do this final backup check. If I do D61, you can see a whole slew of items that are different now, and that's not going to actually match ever, really. There's no real um, state for... There's no real state for... Uh, we're powering down. So that's not really necessary in any way. We're going to go ahead and power it off the computer. Now we're down to half an amp. We won't lose the checklist display. That runs off the battery. So you'll see when we're done, we'll still have like 0 .5, 0 0.05 amps, and that's coming from the checklist. Uh, let's see, the final thing I need to do is just check the main bus. The main bus is basically everything that's not off now. Make sure everything is closed, off, or safe. We're ready. Main bus is powering down. So that residual is being used by our checklist. There's no real way to turn that off. Okay, with, um, with all power down, we can go ahead and turn our generator bus to off. And actually there's there's no real uh, there's no real option here to turn the generator bus off. You can turn it to either generator, but that's not really uh, something you can do. Okay. So you're going to turn generator 1 and generator 2 off. We're going to wait for 0 volts. zero and there it goes okay now here's the really fun part APU off I'm still here I didn't pause anything battery off and finally, EPU on, which will keep our battery going. So, in a, EPU stands for external power unit. Generally, if in a hangar, it would be a power cord coming from the wall. Uh, and in the case of this condition, um, it could be a truck or something. So, generally, with an aircraft, you'd plug your EPU into the into one of the wheel wells. There'd be a there'd be a plug or an outlet rather, uh, in one of these wheel wells. Someone can just plug a power cord up into it. Okay. And that's it. So we hit the end of the checklist. We hit menu. That's the end of it. We are now in the cold and dark state. Okay, so now we're going to run through the checklist one for cockpit startup. And once completed, we'll be in the takeoff readiness state. 
So we'll start by turning on what we turned off. Uh, we're going to turn the EPU on, just make sure that's on. We're also going to turn on the battery, give us an extra kick start. And we're going to turn the APU on. This is the really fun part. The really, really fun part. Okay, so we just started our APU, and I just checked all of the system messages to make sure that everything was functioning as expected, and it is. So we are all set to go. Uh, next, we're going to turn the generators on, one and two. And red, yellow, and we're nominal. Okay, I'm gonna select one or two. I'm going to go for one. Okay, now uh, it says all power on. Sometimes I'll do that selectively, but for the sake of going straight through everything, we're going to go ahead and do everything. That way it conserves power. For example, I don't need my HUD if I'm not taking off immediately, but that doesn't really matter anyway. All right, so we'll start by going in the order that I like, which is generally an order of increasing uh, relevance to the mission. So I'll always turn the computer on, followed by the main bus and the light pack. And you'll notice when the computer comes up, it has a booting phase that it has to go to go through, and the booting takes about you know 45 seconds or so. Uh, so we'll wait for that to go up, and when it's done, you should see the Space Tech logo. Perfect. So everything is nominal. And I'm going to go for the main bus, then the life pack, then the engine, the airlock, the radio, MFD, and the HUD. So we're now having power to all buses, or all subsystems rather, on uh, generator bus one. Okay, so that's running. We're going to go ahead and turn the EPU off now. Next is to close the nose cone and airlock door. That's going to get really annoying. Turn that off. So uh, I need to disable that. There's a there's a way you can disable the automatic voice callouts in the config file, and I don't know why I didn't do that, but I need to. So okay. I don't mind chatter, but it has to be realistic. If it's just uh, Neil saying. Buzz, Buzz, this is Neil. We have touchdown. You know, whatever he said. Um, it, 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 it's not fitting. It's not fitting when you're trying to, to simulate a Delta Glider. So, we'll go ahead and proceed with closing the nose cone and the airlock doors. You close the inner door, then the outer door, then the nose cone in that order. Do note that as we close the nose cone, that will seal us from the atmosphere. And it's going to prevent the air from getting inside. So we're going to have to turn the life pack on pretty soon or we're going to have a bad atmosphere. You can see the CO2 level and moisture and other stuff. The moisture is actually going up because we're breathing. And as you breathe, the moisture gets higher and higher and higher. Same with the temperature, you know, body heat and everything. Okay, so with the exception of radio, we're all powered on. So now I'm going for the outer door. And I should have checked that indicator light. There it is. Closed and closed. So everything looks good. We're going to go for the nose cone next. And if you look, the power used actually goes up. Since closing the nose cone actually takes a good amount of electrical power. 
four amps, in fact. Okay. So now we're going to turn the gear hydraulic pressure on. We're going to turn spacesuits. We're also going to turn the strobe on. And next we're going to flip the middle panel to gimbal mode comp and comp auto. So we're CNT and we're going to change this to auto. Just like that. Okay, the lower panel uh, says to check the fuel. This right here is the main fuel tank. Again, this is the fuel flow gauge. So here's your tank. 9,600 kilograms is full, 600 kilograms is full. So we have a tank that's over 99% full. Uh, to be precise, 99.5% full. And RCS is full, 100%. So we're good to go. By the way, I forgot to mention that. Here's another good fuel display. So for more resolution, you have a 0.0, .0 but if you wanted to see you know, the, the hundredths digit, you could view that up here. And it even gives you a thrust percent too. So like if you turn your engines on like 11% of the way, because you know that 11% is what you need to hold 40,000 feet in the atmosphere, you can throttle it using your engine display. It'll also tell you how much thrust you're getting and your acceleration. So it helps to cut down uh, on the amount of math that you have to do because you can just cheat by looking at your acceleration. Okay, anyway, um, we're going to turn the valves on. Again, just a single left click. Go for hover, auto air intake. Notice we're coming around this the same way. You do this panel counterclockwise. Uh, it it really doesn't matter in this case, but for example, the cabin air recycling main and backups, that kind of matters, but not really. Okay. Auto air intake is on two main valves, the RCS valve, and check that your fuel dumps right here and here, and the cross feed are off, and they are. Okay. Let's go for the life support panel so that we don't die. The check to make sure that the input valve pressure is off, and it's off. Even though we have pressure on the line, the valve is closed, so we're okay. Input switch is off, otherwise it would read A and B, so that's good. And then we're going to check the inputs are moving down here, O2, N2 to auto. So right click, left click, right click, left click. So now our oxygen and nitrogen are flowing into the system. So we're going to be resupplied with uh, oxygen. We won't leak nitrogen because the outside pressure will, will, over time, a very long time, keep things equalized. Okay, cabin air recycling main and backup buttons on. So again, I like to do fan, filter, cool, moisture in that order, because it's a good idea to do that. Fan, if you notice, won't do anything. You look at the contaminants, when I turn the filter on, that'll immediately suck that out. Now if I go to cool, you should see the, the temperature start to uh, move to wherever we have it set. And then when I put moisture, you should see the humidity start to drop. Good. And turn the backup system on in that order. That says ready for takeoff. Uh, see ground takeoff checklist. Probably should have um, added my state diagram you technically need one and some of three to be in the takeoff ready state. It's kind of a little bit confusing. We're powered up, but we're not quite ready for takeoff yet. Ooh, here's one thing that I forgot about. Rotation, translation, elevon, pitch elevon, all control off. That should have been turned off before we went cold and dark. I forgot about that. Okay, 
there's a few more things we need to do. We turn off the battery. And uh, we're also going to check that the passenger seatbelt sign is on. Whoops, that was strobe. There's seatbelt. You want to arm ejection seats. This will allow you to eject. And then we got the message that the ejection seat is now armed, which if we pull this cord, we're going to eject. Windows ray filter set. Uh, generally, if you're going to like the outer planets and whatnot, you can go to medium. Otherwise, if you're going to like Venus, you want to go to high. Go to atmospheric auto. Pitch Alivon. Alivon. Translation. Rotation. Atmospheric auto. Okay, so now we should be in the takeoff ready state. If I go to D61. Configuration correct. Correct. We are in takeoff state. So now if you want to take off, then you follow the checklist. Apply full power, rotate at your takeoff speed, and the list goes on and on. So we're back in the state that we loaded the configuration in. And that's it. So now we're going to follow checklist 9 to go into safe mode. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this has a little bit of a description of what safe mode is. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll go over this once we actually get into safe mode so I don't have to talk so loudly. Now this one's a little bit more inaccurate. So it's, it'll say all buttons off apart from cabin air recycling main buttons. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the cockpit in a uh, counterclockwise direction. That's the way I prefer. So you do a counterclockwise turn of each one of these panels. And that, that's how you go through it. It doesn't matter whether you follow this procedure or not but that's a very safe method of doing that so I'm gonna start at 12 o'clock and just scan everything here turn everything off and that's it so come down here thruster doors we have closed these guys are closed check the long-range antenna stowed cockpit canopy is good Oh, I forgot about this. You can actually adjust the seat. Because, why not? Okay, cargo bay is closed. We haven't loaded configuration yet. We want to save the ejection seats. Turn off the windows ray filter. Going around cabin air recycling main buttons only. We can leave the O2 and N2 tanks to auto. So that completes the lower panel. Uh, go to the upper panel. We're going to close all the airlock doors. I know this sounds weird, but I'll explain it later how safe mode works. Close, close, close. EPU button on. Select your EPU both. By the way, before you take off, it's a good idea. Oh, <laughs> Shoot, I forgot, this is a left click, right click. So I just caused a, uh, a total spacecraft bus bolt. So we're gonna have to reset these breakers by clicking them off and on again. Let's see if there's anything else down here that failed, oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, forgot about that. You, you click over here. I have another mod where if you click where you want the button to go, it'll go the, in that direction. But it do doesn't work. It doesn't work for this spacecraft. When you do a critical thing such as takeoff, you want EPU in both. Because if you have a bus failure, like for example this, we're going to continue using the generator too. Okay. In fact, we're going to turn generator 1 and 2 off right now. But it's okay because it's on EPU in both, which means if we turn both generators off, we're still using the external power unit. 
in order for safe mode to work, you need access to an external power unit, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. APU button off, and all power button off aside from light pack power. So before we turn the APU off, we'll go for everything else. Just my personal preference. You turn the gear hydraulic pressure off too. And the seatbelt. And when we turn APU off, we should receive a message that we've gone to safe mode. That's it. So we're currently in safe mode. Now, in a normal spacecraft today, safe mode is generally a response to an anomalous situation. Um, like, say, for example, you're not receiving power on your solar panels and your, your battery voltage is going lower and lower. One of the responses might be to go into safe mode, which, ironically enough, we're only using 19 amps, which uh, is actually kind of high, but, yeah, that's not a really good parallel, but it'll, it'll shut down the non-essential systems. In our case, the non-essential systems are basically everything except the life pack, the computer, and maybe portions of the main bus. So, um, basically, what safe mode is for is it is a mode which tells the simulator, hey, I don't need simulated spacecraft anymore. And that's for one of two reasons. One is you've landed on the ground, you want to shut the, the ship down, but you don't want you, you don't want the atmosphere to become toxic. So safe mode, what safe mode will do is lock your configuration. When we went to power off completely, cold and dark, we had to leave the airlock open because otherwise we're on board the ship and we're going to cause it to, um, we're going to cause it to, we're, we're going to basically poison the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide will build up we'll lose our oxygen, and everyone on board the ship will die, which is really bad. So to combat that, you go to safe mode, and that allows you to effectively go cold and dark, but with crew technically on board. And this is how you would kind of store it in a hangar. You close everything like this. That way it's technically all sealed up. The other situation where you might want to use it is when you're docked to a mothership. So you notice it'll say crew unloaded the ship. So they can only offload and you can only go into safe mode when you have access to the external power unit. That's in two situations. One, when you're docked. And two, when you're stopped on the ground. When that is the case, you can go into safe mode. And if you're docked, what will happen is your crew will unload the, uh, the airlock, even though, again, the airlock is closed. And so what you're doing is you're closing up the ship and putting it into, into deep freeze. So if I ever would fly up to the Aero mothership, what I would do is I would dock, and then I would turn on or off whatever systems I want to be on the Delta Glider during cruise transfer the crew out to the mothership and then put the um, shut the airlock doors and then put the spacecraft into safe mode. That'll put it into a realistic low power hibernation state where regardless of whatever's inside or outside the Delta Glider, what, regardless of whatever happens to the mothership, as long as you remain docked or on the ground with access to an external power unit, you will maintain safe mode and nothing can happen. Basically, all the environmental parameters are not simulated. Everything is frozen.
uh, that's that's basically exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's a freeze of the simulation. It's like hitting the pause button, but not really hitting the pause button. Okay, so let's um, dehibernate and come out of safe mode. So to... I forgot about that. We actually can't even navigate the... Um, we can't even navigate the checklists because it simulates everyone egressing, even though that's not necessarily the case. If I go outside, you won't see anybody here. It just simulates everyone leaving. So what we would do, is we would transfer a crew to the mothership, except for the pilot, and then you'd put it into deep storage, and he just wouldn't appear until you start the ship up again. That's kind of a simulator limitation. All right, so... We have to start the APU and then follow the cockpit startup procedure because no one's on board. So we should get a status message once we start the APU uh, that we're coming out of safe mode. There we go. Out of safe mode. Okay, everything's looking good. We should now be able to navigate to the ground cockpit startup. Now, if we were on the ground, then we'd follow this one. But if we were in the docked state now, we would have to follow the docked cockpit startup to come out of safe mode. That's important. Okay. EPU on, battery on. The APU is already on. Generator 1 and 2 on. Generator bus one or two. Turn all our power back on. Turn EPU off. Now we can go to EPU or both. In this case, because we came out of safe mode, we don't have to close anything. Turn our gear hydraulic pressure on. Uh, seat belt, strobe arm, and we didn't go to comp lock because we were on uh, safe mode. Lower panel, check the fuel. Turn all the valves on. Hover, auto air intake, main valves. RCS, fuel dump, and crossfeed are off. Life support panel, check to make sure the input valve pressure is off. Input switch is off. A and B switch to auto. And this is all configured that way because of safe mode. Recycling all buttons on. We have the prime. We're going to turn the backup system on in case the prime fails. And now we can go to the, you know, it says ready for takeoff. We're actually really not. Okay, EPU and battery off. Passenger seat belt on. Ejection seat, go ahead and arm that. And set the gray windows filter to medium. One thing that should be added to the checklist, I think there's a way to modify these. I would modify it to, to tell it to turn the um, atmospheric control off. It's technically optional, but it's good practice to okay, follow. Okay, uh, auto, uh, GPS, and pass the backup. Because that's, that's how, that's the trade, you know, how the trade does it. Okay, so that's it. D... Six one configuration correct, and we are back in the takeoff readiness state. So, hopefully, that was kind of useful in explaining how the systems work and how you can turn the ship on or off. Another thing you might want to add to this thing is also changing the uh, the secondary HUD and just checking the master alarm to make sure that there's nothing there. You'll hear it if, if there's a um, if there's an alarm, you'll hear it. It's a really annoying beeping sound that you can't miss. 
so that is it. Uh, we'll go over some more checklists and some more states. Probably take it in uh, to the atmosphere and demonstrate a few autopilots uh, in the next episode, and then the following one the LBR should be uh, step four. Just checking uh, for sync config. Copy. Should be ready to go to orbit. Okay. Well, we are using 76 amps, so. So safe mode is actually a reduction of power. We're going from 76 to like 22. So in that case, it is a it is actually a really good simulation. So this has been Dr. Aeronautics, and uh, technically the second, but I have it labeled the first tutorial. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.